Hello, good morning. Hello, David. Welcome to morning prayer at St Mary's Halesworth <coughs> at 8 o'clock this Tuesday, the 7th of February. The words are available, downloadable as actual Apple or Android devices or online at Arim's Daily Prayer or the Church of England's website. And you may join by Zoom. Codes are on the Blythe Church's website and Facebook page. We live stream on Facebook and I'm in the building. You're very welcome to join me here. <clears throat> I was going to say it's going to get slightly warmer, but we've had a frost overnight. But uh, you're very welcome. Do let me know if you'll get in touch if you're coming any distance, just in case on that particular occasion I'm doing something else. O Lord, open our lips. And our mouth, mouth shall proclaim okay. your praise. A song of God's righteousness. Bless the Lord, O my soul. And all that is within me, bless his holy name. <clears throat> bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your sins and heals all your infirmities, who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with faithful love and compassion, who satisfies you with good things so that your youth is renewed like an eagle's. The Lord executes righteousness and judgment for all who are oppressed. He made his ways known to Moses and his works to the children of Israel. The Lord has established his throne in heaven, <clears throat> and his kingdom has dominion over all. Bless the Lord, you angels of his, you mighty ones who do his bidding and hearken to the voice of his word. Bless the Lord, all you his hosts, you ministers of his who do his will. Bless the Lord, all you works of his, in all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Glory, Glory to, the to the Father, and to the Son, and, Son, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit. As it, As it was in the beginning, beginning is, now, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Amen. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. <coughs> the Psalms appointed this morning, which you'll find at the back of the book or by scrolling on, are numbers 32 and 36. Psalms 32 and 36. Be glad, be righteous, and, righteous and, and rejoice in the Lord. Lord. Happy the one whose transgression is forgiven and whose sin is covered. Happy the one to whom the Lord imputes no guilt, <clears throat> and in whose spirit there is no guile. For I held my tongue, my bones wasted away through my groaning all the day long. Your hand was heavy upon the air, <clears throat> my moisture dried up, but drought in summer. Then I acknowledged my sin to you, and my iniquity I did not hide. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the guilt of my sin. Therefore let all the faithful make their prayers to you in time of trouble. In the great water flood it shall not reach them. <clears throat> you are the place for me to hide in. You preserve me from trouble. You surround me with songs of deliverance. I will instruct you and teach you in the way that you should go, I will guide you with my eye. <clears throat> Be not like horse and mule, which have no understanding, whose mouths must be held with bread and bridle, bridle, or else they will not stay near you. Great tribulations remain for the wicked, but mercy embraces those who trust in the Lord. Be glad, you righteous, <clears throat> rejoice in the Lord. 
Shout for joy, all who are true of heart. Glory to the Father, Father and to the Son, and, and, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as it was in the, was beginning, the beginning, is now, now and shall, shall be forever. Be Amen. Amen. Be glad, you righteous, and rejoice in the Lord. <clears throat> With you, O God, o God is, is the, the well, well of, life. of life. Sin whispers to the wicked in the depths of their heart. There is no fear of God before their eyes. They flatter themselves with their own eyes, and their abominable sin will not be found out. That their abominable sin will not be found out. The words of their mouth are unrighteous and full of deceit. They have ceased to act wisely and to do good. They think out the mischief upon their beds. They have set themselves in no good way. Nor do they have <coughs> that which is evil. Your love, O Lord, reaches to the heavens, and your faithfulness to the clouds. Your righteousness stands like the strong mountains, your justice like the great deep. You your Lord shall save both man and beast. How precious is your loving mercy, O God! All mortal flesh shall take refuge under the shadow of your wings. They shall be satisfied with the abundance of your house. They shall drink from the river of your delights. For with you is the well of life, and in your light shall we see light. O we'll continue your loving kindness to those who know you, and your righteousness to those who are true of heart. Let not the foot of pride come against me, nor the hand of the ungodly thrust me away. They are fallen, or who work wickedness. They are cast down, <coughs> and shall not be able to stand. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it as was in the beginning, beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Amen. With you, O God, is the well of life. Well of life. Scrolling past our first reading, if we're following online to the Canticle, a song of peace. If you are following in the book, turning back to morning prayer, ordinary time, Tuesday morning. Spirit of God, of God teach us your, your ways, ways that we may walk in the paths of peace. Come, let us go up to the mountain of God, to the house of the God of Jacob. That God may teach us his ways, and that we may walk <coughs> in his paths. For the law shall go out from Zion, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. God shall judge between the nations, and shall mediate many peoples. They shall beat their swords into ploughshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn <coughs> anymore. O people of Jacob, come, let us walk in the light of the Lord. Glory, Glory to, the to the Father, and, and, and to the Son, and to the Holy and Spirit, and Spirit, as it was as it at the was beginning. The beginning is now, is now and shall, shall be forever. Be Amen. Amen. Spirit of Spirit God, of teach Jesus us your ways, that we, that we may walk in the paths of peace. peace. Say to our first Bible reading, Second Chronicles chapter 3. So Chronicles is in the history <coughs> section of the Hebrew Scriptures, so if you turn to about a quarter to a third of the way through from the beginning, um, Kings, Kings, Chronicles, Chronicles, 1st, 2nd Samuel, etc. You should find it about there. Do use an index if it doesn't fall open for you. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. We're looking for the second book of Chronicles and we're looking for the third chapter. So one, the number two is in the title of the book and the large number three is the head of the paragraph within the body of the text. 2 Chronicles chapter 3. Thank you, David. Solomon began to build the house of the Lord. 
for the Lord has appeared to his father David, the place that David had designated on the threshing floor of Hermon. Or Oran, the Jebusite. He began to build on the second day of the second month of the fourth year of his reign. These are the Solomon's measurements for the building, the building the house of God. Its length in cubits of the old standard is 60 cubits, and the width 20 cubits. The vestibule in the front of the nave of the house is 20 cubits long, across the width of the house, and its height is 120 cubits. He overlaid it on the inside with pure gold. <clears throat> the nave he lined with cypress, covered with fine gold and made palms and chains on it. He adorned the house with settings of precious stones. The gold was gold from Arvium, so he lined the house with gold. Its beams, its wall, its thresholds, its walls, and its doors. And he carved cherubim on the walls. <clears throat> he made the most holy place, its length corresponding to the width of the house is 20 cubits and its width, with, and its width was 20 cubits. He overlaid it with 600 tons. <coughs> the weight of the nails was 50 shekels of gold. He overlaid the upper chambers with gold. In the most holy place he made two carved cherubim and overlaid them with gold. The wings of the cherubim together extended twenty cubits. One wing of one, five cubits long, touched the wall of the house, and his other wing, five cubits long, touched the wing of the other cherub. And on this cherub, one wing, five cubits long, touched the wall of the house. The other wing, also five cubits long, was joined to the wing of the first cherub. The wings of these cherubim extended twenty cubits. The cherubim stood on their feet facing the nave, and Solomon made a curtain of blue and purple and crimson fabrics by <coughs> women and a work cherub, cherubim into it. In front of the house he made two pillars twenty-five cubits high, with a capital of five cubits on top of each. He made encircling chains and put them on the tops of the pillars. And he made one hundred pomegranates and put them on chains. He set up the pillars in front of the temple, one, one on the right, the other on the left. The one on the right he called Shachim, and the one on the left, Boaz. Thank you. I think the thing to take away from this is that uh, Solomon is building a temple in their view. So uh, one of the traditions in the Hebrew Scriptures will both have Solomon building, but one tries to make it as much as possible David's building, so he does all the preparation, gets all the stuff ready, and then Solomon simply sort of is, if you like, a sort of a, a caretaker while it all happens, and then the other writers make out it's much more Solomon's job, and I forget which way round this, which, where, where this one sits, but we've got um, pretty much an engineer's account with uh, lots and lots of measurements and numbers. I particularly like that idea that these are cubits in the old standard, so we're in imperial here. Yeah, I think rubbish for me. <laughs> <laughs> I want it in meters. Yeah, so um, I think that's what's that what that's all about. But just the amount of gold, just extraordinary, and it was designed to be heaven on earth. It was a depiction and expression of the glory of God. So the measurements are all um, sort of good round figures, and they're all sort of I imagine they kind of relate to each other in. I don't know whether they had that sort of one-third, two-thirds, what is it, the golden rule in architecture, something like that. I expect it's probably fulfilling yeah, some... One root two. Yeah, it's probably something like that. 
yeah. if you looked into it. Um, so it's all sort of, and it, its aim is to be perfection. And the pomegranates and everything, I'm not quite sure what those two pillars are, whether they are representative of the two trees, the expressions of God's um, immortality and uh, God's uh, wisdom. But the pomegranates uh, demonstrate, um, yes, regenerative power, but also that sort of fruitfulness, the garden and uh, the the cherubim. These are two huge creatures with wings that stretch the width of the room that they're in. People tend to think of cherubs as being those sort of slightly disturbing naked babies that are depicted in some churches. But this is actually what a cherub is. It's this awe-inspiring, vast spread of wings. I guess it'd be a bit like going to a bird of prey centre and seeing one of those animals on your wrist or on your hand on the gauntlet spreading its wings out next to somebody else holding a bird with their wings spread out uh, and just massive and all shining in gold and uh, it's an expression of uh, on earth just as these words are a poor expression some of our songs of praise are a poor expression but it's an attempt to present reasonably an expression of God's presence a meeting place that uh, gives value to what actually goes on during worship as God meets us and we meet God, which is why our churches are so big and uh, traditionally were so well decorated. One only has to visit some of the churches in uh, Europe where the Reformation, well, first of all, the architecture was uh, grander, but the Reformation did affect them in the same way as ours. And uh, perhaps visit an Orthodox church to uh, just see how glorious and how ornate they understand their worship to be. Uh, and uh, that's what's going on here. Our second reading is John seventeen six to 19. John is the fourth of the Gospels, so we're now in the Greek scripture, the second covenant. If you open your Holy Bible, if you've got a printed version halfway, two-thirds of the way through, move towards the back, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and then John. We're looking for large number 17 at the head of the paragraph, chapter number 17, and small numbers in the text, verses 6 to 19 on this occasion. Scroll onto it if you're following electronically. John 17 from 6. Thank you, David. Jesus looked up to heaven and said, I have made your name known to those who gave me from the though to those you whom you gave me from the world from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave to me I have given unto them, and they have received them, and know in truth that I came from you. (coughs) They have believed that you sent me. I am asking on your behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave to me, who gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine. I have been glorified in them, and now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them, I protected them in your name that you have given me. I guarded them, not one. I guarded them, and not one of them was lost, except the one who was one destined to be lost, so that the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I am coming to you, and I speak these things in the world, so that they may have my joy made complete in themselves. I have given them your word. And the world has hated them, because they do not belong to the world. Just as I... Ah, let's, let's get that again. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them, because they do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. I am not asking you to take them out of the world, but I ask you to protect them from the evil one. They do not belong to the world, just as I did not want to the world. Sanctify them in the truth. 
your word is truth, as you have sent them to me unto the world, so I have sent them into the world. And for their sakes I sanctify myself, so that they also may be sanctified in truth. Thank you. I think you need to sit down and have a cup of tea now. I think so. that sounds was really very really difficult. I don't know why that's so difficult to read. It was. I think because it's um, part of the John sort of uh, catalogue or library. And so it's very mystical, very poetic, but it's written in prose. And so in the original language in Greek, that he's playing with, the writers are playing with words. And in the English, I think we have, for example, the word word and the word world keep popping up. Um, and the sentence structure is all sort of quite sort of poetic, I suppose. So it's totally different to the previous reading where we just had our sort of set squares and plumb lines out. <laughs> and we're just yes. sort of immersed in this great cloud of ideas which sort of pass across our minds as uh, we carry on. So, And I think that is an explanation of it as a text. We've got words put into Jesus' mouth as a prayer. The idea of the world here is those things that uh, we don't think God is keen on. Of course, the world is made good. If you go by Genesis 1, uh, creation is good. People amongst whom we live are good and God works in and through them, in my view. But there are things about the world that are not good. Think of Ukraine, think of uh, people being forced to have pay as you go meters on the electric and gas so they can't actually afford to heat themselves and uh, feed themselves anymore. That's definitely not good. And so it's those elements of things about the world, I think, that uh, the writers here are talking about when we're not of the world. We should not be party to that. So the church ought not to support and condone. It ought to condemn and stand against that sort of activity and with and for those who are oppressed. If you are ever in any, any doubt as to which side of an argument the church should be, if you read the scriptures, um, the parable of the sheep and the goats, sheep and the goats, for example, the nations and their peoples are praised when they stand with the oppressed, the excluded, the prisoners, the sick. Um, and so if there is any side on any argument in relation to strike action, for example, uh, or uh, same-sex marriages, whoever is on the back foot, they're the ones the church should be supporting, it would seem to me. And uh, Jesus here is praying for, I think, his immediate disciples, saying that he's given them the word, i.e. their understanding, which means that they don't understand, they, their uh, approach to things is different to those amongst whom they live who don't have that understanding, so that's the word and the world. And uh, he's praying that uh, whilst they're no longer in the world in terms of not believing the same thing, they are in the world in terms of living and buying the same, you know, from the same shops or whatever. And so he's praying they'll be protected and that they'll be effective in the world and uh, kept safe within their new belief system. That's where that word sort of sanctified, set apart comes from. So it's this sort of strange mix of both being our old selves, but also being new creations. And that's kind of why it's such a complicated uh, piece of scripture to understand. So it's the sort of thing perhaps that ought to be sung gently and quietly over harps or something that we can sort of sit and listen to during over an hour or two on a retreat. And it will sort of just sink in. The words themselves may not make as much sense as the, the general ideas they're trying to put across. Perhaps some might say that's the same as poetry or uh, sung musical works. So our responsory is um, very pertinent. We're asking God to help us understand what's going on. Open my eyes, O Lord, that I may see the wonders of your law. Open, Open my, my eyes, eyes, O Lord, that I may see the wonders of your law. Lead me in the path of your commandments, that, that I may see the wonders of your law. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Open, Open my eyes, O Lord, that I may see the wonders of your law. The Song of Zechariah. In your tender compassion, O God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. 
He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was at the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. In your tender compassion, O God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us. Let us pray. Father, Son, Spirit, one in three, three in one, we come to you at the beginning of this day and we thank you for raising us to consciousness, for rising as the sun in the sky in our lives, that we may see, that we may be warmed, that we may be fruitful. We pray that we will put um, a true value on worship and recognise that whilst we can be with you, you are with us always, that there is something particularly um, precious about gathering together in your presence and engaging with your gift to us uh, in liturgy by the Spirit. And uh, we thank you for your prayers, for those whom you lived amongst, that you sent into the world. And we thank you that we have received their message. Uh, I don't know whether we'll have the next paragraphs tomorrow, where you pray for those who believe because they believe, which is us. And we thank you for your grace that we have received the opportunity to choose to follow and understand, and that the way that that sustains us in our brokenness, hurt and grief. And we thank you for your presence amongst us, and we want you to know that we do value it, and uh, we are grateful, and we only pray that others will come to know that same joy and peace and value it as we do. Amen. From the World Council of Churches, we pray for Andorra, Italy, Malta, Portugal, San Marino, Spain and Vatican City over the next few days. We're thankful for the rich historical legacies and distinctive cultures in those countries. We pray for the preservation of the fragile environments and shorelines in that region. Amen. With Christian Action Church Education, we... Uh, apparently it's... Safe Internet Day, and we pray that uh, the fact that it, that it is that day will provide an opportunity for conversations between people to talk about how to keep people safe uh, online. We pray for those who are most vulnerable to be protected from negative influences. Amen. From Green Christian, just uh, scrolling through to find today's Entry in my print-ready copy, which is uh, easier said than done. <clears throat> One moment. Oh, there we are. On the eve of the fourth anniversary of Bruma. Dino Tailings Dam disaster that resulted in the deaths of 270 people. The United Nations Environment Programme, the Church of England Pensions Board, representing principles for responsible investment that convened the process, announced the formation of an independent global tailings management institute aimed at driving mining industry safety standards. The institute will be central to the independent auditing required of companies to ensure that they are in conform that they conform to the global industry standards on tailings management. So I don't know what tailings, I presume that's the outfall of um, mining, 
Um, I'm guessing because it keeps appearing throughout the paragraph. So it's like the arising's the waste. Uh, perhaps that's the water. Perhaps that's the um, toxins and other chemicals that washed out. And this dam, I guess, uh, retained those uh, washings. And as a disaster, I expect the dam collapsed. And uh, so there were these 270 deaths. The Church of England is involved. I'm not quite sure why. Maybe it had invested. Uh, maybe it is in England. I'm not sure. But it's always good to have standards and organisations holding businesses to account. Amen. The Anglican Communion has five marks of mission, the fifth of which is its concern for the environment. And uh, Pope Francis' prayer directed towards creation includes the lines, All powerful God, you are present in the whole universe and in the smallest creatures. You embrace with your tenderness all that exists. Pour out on us the power of your love that we may protect life and beauty. Fill us with peace that we may live, harming no one. Amen. In our benefit cycle, we pray on Tuesdays for our business and uh, sort of social sectors across our town. As we pray here, we pray for all towns everywhere. Those organisations that are small, locally owned, operated business, small, medium enterprises, um, we pray for them alongside those supported by taxes, both nationally and uh, locally. And uh, we pray for our charitable sector, although we do pray for them later in the week also. And uh, we thank you for those at all levels, those sort of corresponding levels of uh, management, decision-making and frontline. Uh, and those that are served by those organisations, we pray that we will, as community, stand alongside those who need to have decent terms and conditions, decent work environment, they can do the jobs that they were trained to do to their own satisfaction, and that we, as recipients of that, can receive the care, the education, the um, transport, the communications that uh, we uh, ought to be able to rely on. We thank you for our people. Today we pray for Jason, the church warden here, and I would pray that we find uh, other wardens, size people, people on the committee to support and sustain both him, the treasurer, and the secretary. Pray for a, a treasurer here um, who actually enjoys that role to take on from the person who's doing it very competently, but uh, it isn't really their thing. And uh, we do continue to pray for an increase in numbers on the PCC and uh, numbers in the congregation here that we can become a, a powerhouse for the valley in terms of providing skills and talents and uh, funding and supporting those smaller settlements uh, around and about that the river that flows through this town goes on to feed. Amen. Lord, in your mercy... Ja, <laughs> The collect for Tuesday mornings from the book during ordinary time. Eternal God and Father, you create and redeem us by the power of your love. Guide and strengthen us by your spirit that we may give ourselves in love and service to one another and to you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our, our Father in heaven, heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Goodbye to those joining us on YouTube.